Okay guys, so that week six here and the question from Alexander, do we have just a lab today? Oh, so Alexander, do you want uh, today just lecture and uh, not a lab? So that can be arranged as well. So I'll just uh, keep doing lecture, 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 lecture. And normally it's always a lab, <coughs> Alexander. It's a uh, majority of the time my class has labs and that's the way we learn but uh, yes we have just a lab today if that answers your question so okay please no just lecture 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 oh david says just lecture 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 no screenshots today i thought you guys loved screenshots come on that was so much fun right taking a screenshot and everything Oh, man, then how would I mark you for if, if I don't see your screenshots, right? Okay, so uh, so well, uh, lecture is always boring, and it's always the uh, you know labs that are always interesting. Plus, again, how would I mark you if I just give you lecture? Okay, so let's get going. I that's. I want to do screenshots. Maybe you're saying don't want. You know, uh, last year uh, we had no last before that. I used to have sixty or seventy screenshots, and then we we went down to only ten screenshots. Right, so ten is like nothing, right? And uh, ten is too much. Come on. Okay, so uh, let's uh, carry on. Alexander says the reason I asked is I will have to leave the class at one point. Okay, sure. Well, see what you started. Now they're uh, you know talking about this. So, <laughs> okay, guys, uh, let's carry on. And uh, what we need to do is AWS uh, virtual machines. Uh, uh, there is. Uh, um, Lord Balan Sing Lab and uh, Auto Scaling Lab. Let's see if we can do that. We'll do this with uh, all the AWS Educate, uh, you know, restrictions that are there. So um, you know, these are both uh, very interesting and. Uh, especially well load balancing and auto scaling and these both are quite tricky and uh, yet interesting as well right so um hmm, which should i start first i think uh, auto scaling is easier maybe we can have load balancing. okay let's go for load balancing first um so aws load balancing so what kind of load are we balancing here right so we can go for that and um, I'll just uh, put it here in uh, documentation so normally AWS uh, has uh, AWS in the documentation I'm just gonna put here ELB so that's how AWS refers to it Elastic load balancing. Why the page font is so small? Okay. What is elastic load balancing? Elastic load balancing. Uh, well, I'm just gonna put that here. Uh, what are we talking about? Load balancing. But what it is called in AWS? It is called elastic load balancing, right? And uh, cannot see your screen blocked. Guys, are you able to see my screen? Anyone able to? Oh, okay. Hey, everyone's able to see the screen. How come, Mesurith, you're saying you cannot see my screen? Um, that's strange. Mesurith, are you able to hear me? So, I, others are able to see my screen, so the problem may be on your side. Try to, like, uh, you know, log out, log in again, right? All right, so, elastic load balancing. We were talking about that. So elastic load balancing automatically distributes your incoming traffic across multiple targets. Multiple targets means what? 
okay I you can hear me that's right so well others can see my screen so I think uh, the problem is on your side so you can just uh, sign out sign in from Webex I guess that might be the issue that might resolve the issue right so um, Okay, uh, so method, yeah, admin. multiple target equal to multiple EC2 instances. There you go, David Seeger said it. So, um, multiple targets would mean multiple instances or virtual machines, such as EC2 instances, containers, and IP addresses uh, in one or more availability zones. So, they can be on different availability zones, and still the data could be sent to them. Uh, with round robin or uh, you know any other way of distribution of data so it monitors the health of its registered targets and routes traffic only to the healthy targets elastic load balancing scales your load balancer as your incoming traffic changes over time it can automatically scale to the vast majority of workloads okay uh, so now in English oh, okay well when I whenever I say now in English uh, so this means now in a simpler way uh, so, uh, well, suppose this is AWS uh, cloud, and you have got uh, you got one machine first of all, EC2 instance. So one EC2 instance here, and uh, you have web server inside web server. So web server does what? Host websites, right? So on top of that, you have a website of some type and uh, uh, so you have some kind of products there and those products are uh, really good products so you are anticipating a lot of uh, users and users who will be connecting to the website uh, and then uh, that uh, so now the users can uh, increase in numbers as well if they increase the CPU or um, and CPU and memory will increase as well as more users are clicking on the site so how about if we have exactly the same type of machine with exactly the same type of software there right <sighs> website web server and uh, you have like uh, then you can just distribute the traffic among multiple machines suppose you have uh, 3 4 10 20 30 uh, ec2 instances there and those ec2 instances all have the same uh, website uh, there as well so in that case so oh there's uh, just in that case So uh, you have multiple um, EC2 instances that has the same exact web server and same exact configured website. Uh, but uh, why would you have four or five or ten web servers? Because on one web server, if users are connecting, so uh, they will, uh, you know, this machine might freeze up because of 100% uh, CPU. Uh, because there's too much clicking and too much opening files so how about uh, if the same website uh, is on all these servers and the traffic is redirected actually to all those other machines as well so how are we able to then uh, redirect all the traffic uh, if I just okay so all that traffic needs to be redirected to multiple machines with the help of another service called load balancer. So in AWS it is called elastic load balancer because of uh, its uh, scalability uh, but it is uh, still a load balancer and uh, you would have guessed it what it does. So it load balances the traffic or distributes the traffic. So first of all load balancer oh, Sync. Oh, it just lost the whole thing. 
Lord Balancer. Now, the Lord Balancer would have uh, its own DNS name and IP. So, uh, whatever name you want to give, and uh, so it's a uh, company LB and then uh, IP you want to give uh, then a public IP here as well, right? If it's open to the public uh, or private IP if it's in the LAN, right? Um, so, load balancer company LB for the white. Uh, did I say for yeah, public IP? And that would be any public IP, right? So 24.43.54. Uh, I'm just going random with some IP, public IP. So suppose uh, you create a load balancer for the purpose of distributing equally the traffic to all these underlying four machines or the backend targets. Uh, so the traffic hits uh, actually this public IP and uh, suppose this public IP is connected to uh, or is an uh, added as an A record uh, for a website uh, and maybe that website suppose it is bestbuy.com right so you just simply type bestbuy.com and it is supposed to in the background uh, be, it should it's supposed to hit a load balancer IP and that load balancer simply uh, distribute the traffic to uh, each machine. So uh, fourth, then fifth again here, sixth again. So that is also called round robin. Uh, but there are many other uh, ways to load balance the traffic as well. Uh, so the thing is that, uh, well, that's pretty much what load balancer really does. It distributes the traffic equally on all the machines uh, or if the machine is uh, being overwhelmed so it simply redirects the traffic to the other machine then the other machine then the other machine you can do it that way as well so uh, the main thing here is that the end users should not see degradation of performance suppose all the end users were connected to just one machine that one machine would uh, start uh, performing really slow so that would be a bad user experience. So suppose uh, if, you know, on uh, the deals day, uh, like uh, Black Friday or Best Buy or uh, Boxing Day, uh, what happens is uh, you open a site, suppose, and it's just opening, 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 or it's you're loading something and it's just loading, loading. It's not really giving the results. You go to some other site uh, uh, other than Best. So suppose you go to Canada Computers. Uh, suppose you go to Walmart and you see the same deal there as well. Now you come back to Best Buy to compare and it's still loading. And when you go to uh, there, so uh, fearing that the product would be out of stock, you just simply place the order on the other side. So just the slower side would lose a lot of customers, uh, a lot of buyers. So uh, none of the companies can afford to have a slower website when especially it's the deals night uh, or even throughout the year. And so they normally deploy load balancers and in the back end, uh, either it's a SaaS based uh, website or uh, it's uh, just a lot of long list of virtual machines there that they have to uh, connect to, right? So uh, the traffic has to be distributed so the machine performance remains best and the users can uh, click, click, click and it simply loads, the, uh, the site simply loads fast because each one has, uh, you know, uh, that many amount of users that it can take. So now that is the main purpose of a load balancer. Um, now AWS also has uh, and you know others uh, as well uh, like Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud and all of the cloud they also offer multiple types of load balancers there. Uh, so we have talked about that okay you know that's a load balancer uh, that uh, you can just uh, distribute the traffic among uh, different virtual machines. You can have here 10, 20, 30, 80, 100, 200 virtual machines if you're anticipating that level of traffic there. So I'll just uh, put that here. Okay. So I was not here. Yeah. And uh, then I'll just put it at the end. Put in load balancer. So it's all tab. And then this is pretty much, uh, you know, the first paragraph explains it all. Uh, 
Okay, other than that, um, if we go ahead, load balancer benefits, okay, we talked about the benefits. A load balancer distributes workloads across multiple computer resources, such as virtual servers. Using the load balancer increases the availability and fault tolerance. So the benefit number one would be increases the availability and fault tolerance of your application. Uh, you can add and remove compute resources from your load balancer as your needs change without disrupting the overall flow of requests. So what it's saying now here is that suppose a machine uh, in fact goes down. Uh, this machine goes down suppose. Uh, in that case, uh, it's not going to affect the whole load balancer and the traffic would keep on coming uh, to the other remaining virtual machines and you can just remove a machine from a load balancer and uh, add a new machine suppose uh, there's uh, so much traffic and the machines are just four you want to add 10 more in fact so yes you can add 10 more while not disrupting the operations and traffic flow of uh, the current machines so just keep on adding and it's going to keep on automatically distributing in the newly added machines as well right so uh, it works uh, without any disruption adds and removes machines without any disruption. You can configure health checks, which monitor the health of the compute resources so that the load balancer sends requests only to the healthy ones. You can also offload the work of encryption. Okay, so for, first of all, what does that health uh, ones means? So normally the load balancer has a, a health probe that needs to be configured and what it does is that uh, for the load balancer, the health service really checks, it sends the packet every five minutes and checks it, hey, are you alive, are you alive, are you alive? And if there are two consecutive packet uh, return failure, so the health probe will or health service will simply consider that machine down because uh, two times it sent packet are you live and the packet did not uh, come back so this means that the machine is down and it simply informs for that particular machine that hey load balancer do not send your uh, traffic to that uh, third machine or fourth machine or tenth machine whichever the traffic uh, are you live traffic did not come uh, from so it just simply says and automatically uh, load balancer stops sending traffic to the faulty node and when once the node comes up the server comes up starts right so in that case uh, the health probe checks that if two times the packet comes back successfully then it says oh okay hey load balancer that server is up again now right okay so that traffic is up and uh, uh, now uh, this means that this health probe is very important right so uh, this is uh, overall about health probe as well I'm just gonna copy this So, load balancer benefits. Okay, so if we go ahead, just a sec. Okay, so let's go ahead. Now we have uh, talked about the load balancer related, uh, what's the load balancer first of all and what are the benefits of that. <coughs> Excuse me. Red services, auto scaling, certificate manager, CloudWatch, ECS. Okay, well, there are so many services that are related to that as well. And uh, how 
how load balancing really works on the left side is written there and then it shows now it uh, also has uh, detail of how many types of load balancers uh, which are offered by AWS so elastic load balancer balancing supports the following types of load balancers application load balancer network load balancer gateway load balancer and classic load balancer uh, there's a key difference in how the load balancer types are configured with application load balancers, uh, network load balancers, and gateway load balancers. You register targets in target groups. So you group, suppose there are 10 machines, so a group of uh, two groups, there are five uh, in one group, five virtual machines in one group, and other five in another group. Uh, so uh, with application, network, and gateway load balancers, you register targets in target groups and route traffic to the target groups. So you group the machines together uh, into uh, maybe different groups and then you uh, you know target the traffic to actually the groups, not individual machines. With classic load balancers, you register instances with the load balancer. So you, uh, with a classic load balancer, which is exactly we plan, what we plan to use, uh, we send that traffic from a load balancer to individual instance says right so um, availability zones and load balancer nodes uh, about availability zones that uh, uh, we already know now that there are like in North Virginia region we have uh, six availability zones right and availability zones could be uh, for away from each other like a few kilometers or few hundred kilometers and uh, or miles uh, and uh, so if one virtual machine is in one availability zone and the other virtual machine of uh, the same uh, behind the same load balancer is in another availability zone then also uh, that that's called cross zone load balancing so yes it is supported that uh, there is a different availability zone and uh, the virtual machines are in different availability zones yet they are still uh, supported uh, and load balancer simply sends traffic to virtual machines in different availability zone so this is zone a and this is zone b here right okay so other than that um, you will uh, just uh, so each of the uh, so this is just the targets um, and uh, the virtual machine so uh, now they're saying that uh, also the uh, following diagram demonstrate the uh, effort effect of cross zone load balancing there are two enabled availability zones with two targets in availability zone a and eight targets in availability zone b clients send requests and amazon route 53 route 53 is dns responds to each request with the ip address of one of the load balancer nodes this distributes traffic such that each load balancer node receives 50% of the traffic from the clients. Each load balancer node distributes its share of the traffic across the registered targets. So one availability zone has just two virtual machines. Other availability zone has actually eight virtual machines. Although, um, uh, so method says now cannot log in. So, uh, well, method, we're gonna figure that out when we're going to the lab. Right now, try to understand. Okay. If cross zone load balancing is enabled, each of the 10 targets receives 10% of the traffic. This is because each load balancer node can route its 50% of the tra client traffic to all 10 targets. And uh, so 10% of the traffic uh, would be uh, distributed to uh, each of those targets right uh, total are 10 targets so uh, pretty much they are just uh, starting if cross zone load balancing is disabled each of the two targets in availability zone a receives 25 percent of the traffic each of the eight targets in availability zone b receives six uh, percent of the traffic this is because each load balancer node can route its 50 percent of the client traffic only to targets in its availability zone so obviously uh, we should be enabling cross zone load balancing so equal amount of traffic should be um, uh, distributed across the zone, availability zones as well. So some of the main points I'm talking about, otherwise, uh, you know, uh, it goes uh, a lot more 
Uh, now, uh, request routing before a client sends a request to your load balancer, it resolves the load balancer's domain name using a DNS. The DNS entry is controlled by Amazon. Okay, so well, uh, it's going to uh, Route 53 or DNS will uh, definitely uh, request, you know, uh, uh, handle all the traffic and route the traffic in such a way, uh, first of all, fast and then in a highly available uh, DNS service. It's going to route the traffic to the load balancer in such a way that none of the traffic will be delayed or missed or lagged behind, right? So this is what it's all talking about in great details here. So um, now <clears throat> let's go back here to, um, I'll just uh, put that here and then we can figure out now that uh, uh, Balancing works. Okay. Okay, guys. So what we so David says, if your machines are not in different availability zones, do you even use cross zone? No, then we don't need to. So definitely, if we put it on different zones, then only. Otherwise, we don't need to. Okay, guys. So now the lab itself, and let's go ahead with the hundreds and thousands of screenshots. Okay, just kidding. Uh, no, uh, let's go ahead and uh, try to log in first. Oh, okay. That was not very exciting. So, um, guys, do you remember how to log in? Well, okay, there's a yes. Oh, Nargis already says no. Okay, so uh, let me just uh, share that information again uh, about uh, logging in. You need to have a, a count ID. So this is your URL and uh, then the password. I'm just going to copy this. Uh, First of all, I'll show you here. So uh, the URL to which you need to log in is this. If anyone, okay, so you're already logged in. David is logged in. Any and then Argus is logged in. Okay, we're good. This is the URL with which you log in. When it asks for account ID, this is the account ID. When you're asked for username, so the way we created the username, remember that your ID dash your name. So this is the way we put that. So uh, you all need to log in and the password, obviously, whatever password you put there. So uh, you're supposed to. Anyone not able to log in, uh, just make sure that uh, you are logged in with this information. Everyone is able to log in? Yes. Okay, thank you for that reply. Let's go ahead. Or, oh, okay, there's a yes. So, anyone not able to log in? No. Okay, thank you for that re uh, reply as well. And uh, everyone is able to log in, this means? Really? Shall I go ahead? Yes. Okay, let's go ahead. All right, so that's the first thing and second thing is that I need to give you access to or oh, actually privileges you have access uh, it's the privileges that need to be given so let me just quickly go to the services and um, in fact there's a group that I already created I'm just gonna add you guys to that group it's the Wednesday group Wednesday and add users so I, 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 I have a list here that I need to check so David, Ethan, Denzin, Arif, okay, okay, well, David, 781, is that, uh, yeah, 781, 
So I just had to mention is not in our class. College is not NGO. Nargis is in our class. George two three four. Is there a George two three four in this class? Because I added uh, the other students here, and there is another list here. Nope, no George here. Okay. And if we go down, Yusuf is not in our class. There are there's David, David seventy five. No oh, David, right? Seventy five. Oh, there is. Okay. So Ahmed five thirty two. Um, nope. I want further to yeah in our class. Okay, in this class, Keith nope, Hamid nope, Masurit yes, uh, Dante are you in our class? In this class. Okay. Oh, there he goes. Yes, guys, if you are really you know alert, you can just tell me. Alexander yes, this class. Uh, Kongli nope, Daman Breed. Daman 933, are you in this class? Um, Daman, yes, okay, got it, thank you. River, uh, I think you are here, River. Wayne is not in this class, right? So, Amir is not in this class. Wayne in this class? No, oh, yes, Wayne 791. Uh, oh, there we go. Uh, Master Ed, still trying to log in. Kingsley, no armor, no Sherry's. Sherry's here? Yeah. Uh, Nirvana? No, I don't think so. Uh, Mincio? No. Harshan? No. Ethan? Ethan is in this class? Or. Ethan. Oh, yeah. 400. Cedric, no. John K. Tenzin, yes. Tazwar, yes, right? Tazwar is there. Tenzin is there as well. Um, Tenzin, yeah. John K. is not here. John K. 349, right? Uh, no one is 349. I think we're not done. Okay. <laughs> Jericho, Arif, Arif, uh, Arif, yes. Guys, if you're rep uh, replying fast, that's very good. Thank you. Jericho's not here, right? Uh, so, Jericho, I don't think so. Why do I have two of these? Serious? The passwords are gone, everything is gone, actually. There is what was I thinking? Okay, no Jericho, got it. And uh, Max River is there? Okay, is Max there? Uh, Max is there, got it. Eric, no Eric here, right? No, I don't think so. Yay, we're done. See, that was so simple. Add users. <coughs> so, well, that's supposed to give you privileges. And uh, you got permissions for EC2 IM and uh, elastic load balancing, but hopefully that's all you need uh, and not more. We're gonna know that now. Um, okay, Masarith says he can't. Oh, oh, now you're okay. That's very good. So that's very, very good. Hey, Masarith, did I add you? I think I did. Yeah. So, so guys. Uh, what we can do is we can go to so what's the plan first of all plan is this well this is a diagram just to explain uh, the load balancing or uh, AWS ELB which is elastic load balancing and uh, I'll just uh, put this diagram there Okay, 
and let's go ahead so the lab what's the plan for the lab so everyone's so excited about the lab now yes lab yay and also excited about yes screenshot in fact you know 10 screenshots are two less please go more okay anyway so let's just go to the lab steps right so what are the major steps there bring it on there you go now we're talking so okay here so uh, first of all first of all um, uh, Erebus uh, ELB or uh, elastic load balancing is that uh, we're going to uh, go for let's go to EC2 and create two uh, EC2 instances and uh, well uh, we can choose uh, Windows 2019 instances um, once installed then we will connect um, to them one by one we will deploy a web server inside each of them with the PowerShell PowerShell script actually yeah scripts and uh, then yeah. yeah so we will deploy the load balancer we'll deploy the load balancer uh, and we'll, and configure all the components of it. Uh, we will also we will then test the load balancer. Now this is just the uh, you know um, major steps there. And uh, now what we need to do is uh, go to EC2 instances. We're going to be creating two EC2 instances one by one. Why one by one? Because we need to add one instance to uh, one zone. So uh, let's uh, create the two instances in two different availability zones right well we're gonna then check uh, cross load uh, cross zone load balancing as well to test cross zone load balancing right um, well let's just uh, create it and then uh, once uh, the two instances are created then we need to name them uh, your first name so it's gonna be obviously your first name instead of my first name your first name uh, VM01 and your first name VM02 um, and then we're gonna connect to those instances we're gonna be choosing 2019 uh, okay so well, that's going to be then part of uh, this step. It's going to be 2019 operating system. Okay, guys. So uh, in one of the Google Cloud Labs somewhere else, uh, I had to actually go for load balancing with Linux machines. That was quite tricky. Uh, but here, uh, you know, Windows is always uh, easier because it's we're so used to having Windows. Now let's go for these steps first of all. So let's go to EC2 now. Uh, the AWS Educate uh, it provided us that AWS environment to do some testing. So uh, there could be some um, limitation errors uh, that may come, and I need to uh, resolve them. So yeah, don't be shocked. Okay, so what we need to do is 
create the two instances. Now I'm going to create a diagram as we progress so we could understand uh, what are we doing here. So the first thing is get the two machines up and running, right? So and uh, you're going to name them your first name VM01, your first name, all right? And uh, your first name VM02. So that's the first thing, right? Uh, let's go ahead. So let's reach here and oh yeah, it's gonna be Windows Server 2019 the AMI Amazon machine image, right? And uh, it will have a web server So we will have to connect and install the web server uh, on both of them Okay, so let's get going I'm going to minimize this and uh, let's click that and I'm inside the AWS now we have already understood uh, well where we need to go and the major steps we've uh, uh, already talked about uh, again well mm, there's a very good auditing going on and uh, if anyone uh, you know does some kind of damage like delete uh, something uh, so your uh, because we will know that which account was used so we will that account uh, will so you will lose some marks for that uh, and uh, okay guys so now I'm gonna go to uh, services let's go on the top here to services so only do what I'm doing and again only do what I'm doing and uh, so once you click services here you can see EC2 here. You can also see in recently visited here EC2, or you can just type in search EC2 and get it as well. So let's click that E, C, and 2. Okay. Uh, Tenant says, uh, will we need PEM file that we downloaded last week? No, we will not need that. We'll be creating for today a new one. Okay. And uh, David says, what zones? North Virginia and what? So, yes, uh, it will be North Virginia. Uh, so let's go inside. Uh, I'm going to be telling all that, David. So uh, no problemo here. See this. Uh, so once we all click EC2, so just on the top right, uh, everyone should see North Virginia. If you don't see North Virginia, if you see Ohio, uh, then just click North Virginia. Just click here on the, uh, this and go to and click on top of North Virginia to go and see this North Virginia region, right? So. Uh, once you're in North Virginia region uh, and uh, on the left side so so guys uh, before we go ahead that's gonna be your screenshot number one uh, EC2 dashboard so because why I need your ID to be showing there and I need this information how many instances are running zero elastic IPs zero key pairs doesn't matter placement group doesn't matter snapshot doesn't matter uh, but the rest of the things I need that information of your accounts right so screenshot number one uh, is this screen with your ID clearly showing there and North Virginia clearly showing there and the whole screen right and the title of the screenshot number one is EC2 dashboard right so I'm gonna take a sample screenshot now and so it should be showing your ID on the top and I'll put it there on the okay screenshot number one here one uh, EC two dashboard. So, uh, and I'll just put that uh, here as well. So, screenshot one equals EC2 dashboard. Right. Okay, so let's go ahead. 
Now I'm going to go to the instances on the left side here. Instances on the left side. And you know what to do here. So let's click the launch instances, right? Let's click the launch instances. Once we click that, we should be here. here, here. What? Guys, are you seeing this error loading AMI data? Oh, only I'm the lucky one. And Ahmed is a lucky one. Yay. Two lucky ones. Um, I think I need to just simply refresh. And I'm going to try to refresh on the top. Re and fresh. Oh, now it's okay. So we're good. Right? So just, it's a refresh thing. So once it is uh, done, what's done? Well, we're on the page, right? And it's choose AMI. Amazon machine image. Uh, well, I'm going to press uh, refresh again. Oh, just worked. So uh, we need to first click this free tier only, right? So guys, uh, your midterm exam would be actually a quiz and uh, it will be 20 or 25 questions and uh, I call them 20 or 25 traps. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, the free tier. So suppose I say there, okay, uh, the machines that we used in our labs was, uh, uh, you know, uh, was a commercial machine was not a free to your eligible machine. So obviously it's uh, false, right? Uh, okay. Yes, uh, Lazarus says new instance. Um, yeah, new instance. La launch instance. The orange one on the right side. Did you get it? Okay. Okay. So once on this page. Uh, click this free tier only once you click this free tier only so only free tier eligible machines will show there the gray uh, title here will show you now go down until you see a windows machine because these are all uh, Linux flavors so if I go down 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 and I see this Windows Server 2019 base which is free tier eligible and that's the first one in the list so Windows Server 2019 base if you see that then on the right side is the select blue button so let's click that select blue button so once you click that uh, 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 you know select blue button then this screen comes which is choose instance type now we have discussed all that in last class so refer to the last class video uh, but right now what is selected it says currently selected is t2.micro this is the uh, forever free machine that AWS gives but it has only one vcpu and one GB RAM so that's uh, quite uh, low configuration but that's what's uh, free for us to be used okay so we're gonna keep it selected and go to configure instance details let's click that configure instance details and now we need to be a bit careful uh, because we need to uh, we need one instance now otherwise we could have uh, put two here as well and in one go we would have two instances but then we can't really put them on separate availability zones uh, to test across zone load balancing so what we're going to do is we can select uh, zone a 1a for this machine and the next machine when we create we will just select uh, zone 1b right so how do we uh, select the zone one so first of all the vpc is the default virtual private cloud is the default which is we don't need to use change that and we don't we can't actually second thing when you go to the subnet you can drop down and just go for 1a actually you can choose any one of those uh, there is no specific reason why i'm choosing 1a uh, just to be more organized and uh, to be able to remember that so I'm going to go for 1A, US East 1A here. And uh, default in US East 1A, 4091 IP address is available, right? So um, 
this is for the first machine and we're going to go for 1B for the second machine. That's what we need. Also, we need to make sure that it is getting a public IP, which is by default the configuration. So no need to change here as well. The only change is the availability zone, which is 1A. If you go down, no placement group, uh, capacity reservation, uh, we don't need to join it to domain. We don't need extra CPU. So nothing else. That's it. It's a simple machine that is on availability zone 1A. A, nothing else changed on this page so that will be our screenshot number two, two. okay screenshot number two is um, EC2 instance you know what uh, when we create that machine then we take it or now that's the only change uh, we're doing on configure instance so okay screenshot number two is um, f uh, first instance on AZ1A first instance on AZ. What is AZ? AZ is availability zone. First instance on AZ1A. So I'm going to take a sample screenshot here so you could know what screenshot and your screenshot will have your ID on the top here. So I'll put it there. Screenshot 2. Uh, first instance on AZ1A first instance on AZ1A and I'm gonna paste that and I'll just copy this Okay, so no big deal till now. So let's keep going. Nothing on this page other than that we put one uh, AZ1A. So let's just uh, go to the bottom right. There is add storage written here. So let's click this add storage. Let's click the add storage. And on the storage, nothing to do because uh, there's that free tier limit of 30 GB drive for a Windows machine and 8 GB drive for a Linux machine. So we already have that drive now. So it's okay. No change on this page. Let's click Add Tags. And uh, on the Tags page, let's click Add Tag here, this one. And uh, you can just type this uh, Wednesday um, comp three one zero eight, right? Wednesday uh, comp three one zero eight, and uh, here uh, your ID. So it will be ID dash your name, right? So where is the com three one zero eight and ID dash name the way you're logged in today. So go ahead and put that. So put exactly like that, but your name, not my name. Your ID and not my ID. Actually, that's not even my ID. Okay. So um, once that is written there, let's click configure security group. Let's click configure security group. Now in the security group, we actually need RDP, but uh, obviously we are going for web services. We need to have HTTP traffic as well. So here we're going to be adding not only RDP, RDP, yes, we need because we need to remotely connect, but we need to add the second rule and that is, so let's click the add rule. And we're going to add port 80, which is HTTP. So I'm going to click add rule here, second line adds here, and then I'm going to drop down or drop up actually, and uh, that would be HTTP, this one, right? HTTP port 80 and uh, custom 000. So we are allowing traffic from anywhere 
uh, and that is RDP traffic so obviously we can connect to from anywhere to our desktop and then there is HTTP traffic that can be coming from internet as well right now this can also be uh, if you want to go for my IP so if it, if it clicks my IP then you know already that this is your uh, home DSL router's public IP but let's just keep it anywhere right now custom has that uh, 0000, 000 so if and here anywhere is the same thing custom is the same thing as long as you have the zeros here custom or anywhere does not really matter okay so make sure that RDP and HTTP are there and uh, for the second machine that we will create we will also still put the same thing uh, so we need to remember all that uh, now that is uh, going to be um, RDP and HTTP um, ports we can just uh, make a so security group uh, ports we can just name it like that so screenshot number three is security group ports open keep uh, source as anywhere for RDP yes cherries so anywhere for RDP yes you know what you can if you want I'm just giving uh, that uh, one to you if you want and hopefully by during this class time your ISP does not change your public IP <laughs> if you want you can just go for my IP as well uh, and uh, you, we never know that when our ISP has changed our uh, IP or you can actually know that if you just uh, try to go for the least time for your public IP of your DSL router if you know how to see that then you're okay otherwise keep it anywhere okay so the screenshot number three is change group name oh wow good guys uh, wait for the screenshot number three uh, let's first just change the group name dash your first name let's go for that dash your first name and then take screenshot number three thank you for reminding that anyway. so here just put your name uh, launch dash wizard dash uh, whatever number doesn't matter um, maybe yours is three or two mine is five it doesn't matter really. so uh, launch dash wizard dash whatever number dash your first name now take screenshot number three after putting the name there take screenshot number three and that is uh, security group ports open security group ports open so take screenshot number three security group ports open so security group ports open now I'm just going to take a sample screenshot security group ports open and uh, okay now uh, if the uh, security group name has been changed already and uh, security ports RDP and HTTP have been added here then we're good let's click review and launch right let's click review and launch so once you click review and launch obviously it's going to just give you let you review whatever you have set up back there and it just gives you the you know warning there that hey you're connecting from anywhere that's the first warning second warning is hey aren't you using https for that you need to purchase a certificate uh, within in, in two hundred dollar up to two thousand dollar a security certificate from any uh, you know ca or certificate authority like uh, godaddy.com or uh, uh, digicert.com or verysign.com so we're, gonna, we're using HTTP for the lab purpose and uh, well that's it so nothing to review here uh, and let's click the launch for the first machine so I'm gonna click launch now and you know that it's gonna ask for a key pair just like last time in the last class so uh, choose an existing key pair no nope. I'm gonna 
if any one of you wants to choose to go for the existing key pair, yes, you can. But uh, otherwise, let's just if you know where it is, and uh, but better create a new key pair. Although you can technically you can use a old one as well, but uh, better create a new one. So I click the create a new key pair, and I'm gonna go for KP dash today's date, which is 17 Feb 2021. Dash your first name, right? It's KP dash 17 Feb 2021. Dash your first name. So, but that's the key pair for the second machine we're gonna use as well. So this is the key pair that for the second machine we're gonna use as well. And I'm gonna click download key and pair. I'm gonna click the download key pair. Make sure that you save it somewhere that you can retrieve it from later. So make sure on the left side downloads folder is already selected uh, and uh, although you can just save it anywhere it's just that uh, make sure that you remember where you saved it otherwise just make sure that it is on the downloads folder so on the left side just click downloads folder and then click save so it's downloaded now and click launch instances go ahead and click launch instances now I'm about to do that and okay launch instances now you should be seeing this screen on this screen you should just click the ID to go back to the dashboard you need to click this ID to go back to the dashboard so once you click this ID to go back to the dashboard one immediate thing that we need to do is that uh, we need to give a name here wow it's saying pending oh now it's saying pending. so you can see that name has to be given it's uh, very important so uh, as soon as you take the mouse over there there's that arrow sign that appears here right so you need to click that arrow sign and you need to give your first name vm01 here so let's click that arrow sign and uh, this is showing edit name and we're going to go for your first name VM1. Your first name VM1 and click save. Your first name VM1 and click save. Okay, save. And uh, now it looks good. So the uh, easy, first EC2 instance uh, got created. And uh, what we can do, but I see 15 instances. Uh, yeah. Okay, guys. On the left side just click instances here on the left side this one just click on top of it as soon as you click on top of that now you see everyone else's instances as well and uh, whoa uh, how come you didn't give names to your instances only one has given the name no one else oh you did okay I'll refresh that oh there you go so uh, just the browser was playing tricks on me. Okay, two guys still did not give. And who are those? You can even go to the right side and check their names. Right? Um, when you keep going down, so Cherries has not, or David has not given the, yeah, David has not given a name here yet, but if I refresh, maybe he did. Oh, there is one name missing here. Who's this? Oh, still David. Okay, who else? Wow, you can see that the page is actually. And there is this person who did not. River did not give a name yet. Okay. Which David? Oh, there are two Davids here in this class. Uh, okay. Other David, I guess. Hmm? David S okay and David D you, you guys can actually figure that out <laughs> who's gonna take which one so David S and David D right oh there you go David S is there and uh, David only is there as well 
okay all right guys so all these uh, machines are there or your machine is there it is uh, right so um, that's good we're going to if you've named them already <laughs> wow it looks so strange so what we're gonna do is you know what uh, we need to really get rid of those machines uh, faster so we need to check the names uh, I mean like uh, we need to go ahead so now we're gonna create a second machine and that would be your first name VM2 or VM02 um, and now we kind of know the steps already uh, so we're just going to uh, go for second machine and just be careful again that uh, what are the changes we need to do so let's click the launch instances again let's click the launch instances again and let's click the free tier again do not go fast if you forget something you're gonna miss the whole lab the rest of the labs right uh, reverses change area change area which area yes uh, we're gonna change the availability zone in this machine that we're about to create now but uh, for now we just clicked uh, no no we're not gonna change this region we're not gonna change the region we're gonna just uh, within the North Virginia region we're gonna change the availability zone but not the region so it has to be North Virginia okay so uh, free tier only let's select that if you have selected on the left side free tier only then go down to the Windows machine which is this Windows Server 2019 base and click select once you click select then you go for well nothing on this page because your machine that that's the only machine that you can select is already selected so let's go down to configure instance details make sure that you're still in North Virginia everyone right okay and configure instance details details once we go there the only change we will do is the availability zone and we can go for 1b 1b is the other availability zone and uh, well that's it I guess no that is it so 1b and then we click add storage we click add storage nothing in the add storage because it's already having one disk nothing to change I'll click add tags add tags now here we can actually click the add tag button here let's click the add tag button here and if I oh it does not come on so Wednesday oh yeah now it comes if it comes up like this just select that Wednesday com 318 but here you need to put your ID dash your first name right so put your ID and your first name we know the drill so let's if you have done that already let's click configure security group let's configure let's click configure security group now on this we have uh, done already uh, that uh, stuff uh, you know what uh, the main thing here is we do not need to create or redo this all why because we did create already a security group uh, in previous uh, creation of the instance we can use that same security group here as well how there's a select an existing security group right so instead of creating a new which is and changing all this we're gonna go for select this one go for this select an existing group and uh, we remember that which one we created last time um, so just choose your name and uh, select that for yourself right wow seriously so I 
have uh, Launch Wizard 5 actually. <laughs> Serious. You know, we selected last time as well, so that Launch Wizard is also showing. So go for the date, today's date, right? It's 16 written here, right? I see here 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, and in 17, I see my group. Not only this, I'm gonna unselect. Uh, oh, okay, I was gonna unselect Paul's. Okay, Paul is in the yesterday's class, right? And uh, yeah, I'm just selecting mine. And make sure it is on the 17th here. Make sure it is on 17th and it is. In my case, it is Wizard, Wizard 5. Maybe it's yours also. If it's not showing 5, it's okay. It doesn't matter. Mazareth not showing. Did you put your name when I asked in the last machine to put your name there? So, you know, if that's uh, too confusing, so hopefully everyone got theirs. I got mine, it's uh, Wizard 5 and my name, and I see this 17 here. Okay. Got mine, Mazarath, I can see yours. Hmm, Mazarath, you have to pay attention. Okay. Okay, there you go. David says, uh, choose any and all of the same policy. Yes, brilliant. But, uh, you know, just for the March purpose, I would want you to select yours but yes technically you can select any one of those great today not yesterday make sure it's 17 and well yeah make sure it's yours okay so once you've selected that I've selected mine here that's the one only one that should be selected just check up there way up and until down nothing else is selected make sure nothing else is selected right and make sure only your security group is selected once it is selected click oh uh, yeah, if I select this, I can see that the port 80 and 3389 policy is there for IPv4 and IPv6 both, which is okay. Okay, and uh, let's click review and launch. After only selecting yours, let's click review and launch, right? I'm about to go for review and launch. So this is the review. If I go down, 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 down. So we're kind of good here. So let's click the launch blue button, right? So let's click the launch button here. And uh, this time we're gonna choose existing key pair. And uh, I'm gonna search for my key pair. <laughs> Oh my god, seriously. Okay, this is the first time I've seen all this. Uh, <laughs> just to choose the previous one is, uh, you know, this is 10 February. Today is 17 February, right? So your name with 17 February. 17 is down. Really? So I'm going to go for 17 February. If you choose the wrong key, you won't be able to connect to your second machine. This is critical, actually. So you're saying that I acknowledge that I have access to the selected selected private key file, this. So if you selected a wrong key, make sure it is today's date, make sure it is your name. You select the wrong key, you're logged out of the second machine, right? So this is very, very critical. And uh, once you click I acknowledge, then uh, hopefully nobody clicked ahead of me because uh, there was an Einstein rule that I uh, mentioned at the start of the course and that is uh, I no click you no click right so uh, hopefully everyone has clicked the acknowledge button and did not click the launch instances right right or wrong right I guess I click launch instances <laughs> I clicked ahead okay so this means that uh, one mark gone for all those who went ahead of me and uh, those I know click okay there you go right and uh, those who did not click uh, one mark did uh, they don't get to lose one mark right is that fair yes okay since you insist so 
did not click. No, okay, there's a no. So nice mark. <laughs> so no, uh, I will not. You will not lose mark, but please be careful. I I uh, I wanted to actually, guys, uh, to take a screenshot of this. This is so critical. If you have the wrong key, you're logged out of the second machine. The whole lab for you is gone now, right? The whole lab for you will be gone because you won't be able to do LB or obviously you will have to create a new machine for that with a new key or you have to search for the old key. Anyway, uh, so this is, uh, I, I just can't stress enough, it's the most critical thing. Hopefully, you all have the correct key that you create today. In that case, let's click launch in stances. <laughs> Well, uh, those who want to take a screenshot of this for your own records, yes. Otherwise, uh, officially, I'm not asking for a screenshot because some of us have gone ahead. I understand that. So we don't need a screenshot for this screen. For your own record, you want to take it, go ahead and take it. It's not the official screenshot. Okay, so I'm going to click Launch Instances. Make sure your key is correct. Otherwise, uh, sit back and when the video comes up, then simply follow up and upload that right but you have to tell me that what happened so launch instances now after that much warning I'm not expecting anyone to have uh, placed uh, the wrong key pair there and uh, including me I can still take a screen okay so launch error what guys anyone sees launch error there uh, Mazarath you have to share your screen uh, the error screen on whatsapp if you can uh, otherwise, uh, you know, you, you did uh, you selected something wrong, and uh, because of that, it's uh, oh yeah, this screen yeah sure. So what happened? Initialization launch. Hi, bad gateway. Bad gateway. So why didn't you have a good gateway, Mister? Okay, I'm just kidding. So click on this uh, back to review screen. Click on this back to review screen. Master, do you see back to review screen? Go down. Uh, Master, are you listening to me? Go down. Take your mouse down there. Oh, did you give me control? No. Uh, okay. Master, uh, can you click the back to review screen? Gray button. Yeah, okay. And uh, then, oh, you did. What up? It, I cannot see that. Your screen now. I cannot see your screen. <coughs> Testing all the measurements. Okay. So, um, previous. Now, bad gateway, that's strange actually. Can you click launch again? And uh, yes, that's today's key. Yeah, launch instance again. Should be okay. Oh, there you go. You're okay. Okay, so we're good. Uh, let's just try again. And I'll click, I'll just share my screen now. And uh, I'll have to that chat back on the other screen all right so guys uh, we're gonna click this and first we need to give the name we're gonna click this and first we need to give the name so I'm gonna click that ID here and once you click the ID then I'm gonna quickly give that name here and we all know how to give a name right so uh, click here on this arrow sign and your first name VM2 or your first name VM02 or VM2 whichever just go for the name first and then do anything else go for the name and then do anything else and click save, save, save. so I'm gonna click save, save now once you give the name now I can see the whole mess I mean like a whole uh, uh, not mess I mean like the whole set of machines so I'm gonna click that instances on the left side to see all the machines now that's a lot of machines there 
they're going to be. I'm going to click that instances on the left side. And uh, so ones are here and then two. Dante has the machine. Oh, other names are not showing. Why? I'll refresh the screen. Oh yeah, now I see all the twos. Uh, guys, make sure that you all have given the name, otherwise you'll be so who's this now? Who didn't give the name? Wow, okay, it's so um, in shock of so many machine got created here that it's not even letting me see that. Okay, who's still missing here? Hmm. I'll go for security. River. Hmm. River, try to give the name. Okay, guys, so once the two machines are created, uh, what we need to do is to go ahead and uh, connect to each one of them one by one. And we need to, uh, you know what, uh, we need to connect to both of them and uh, to our ones, right? Um, and uh, we're going to install the web server. So. Uh, I'm gonna go to my machine here my so I'm gonna go to VM1 first whichever you want to connect to so uh, armor VM1 I'll select my mach uh, VM1 first and I need to uh, connect to that machine so uh, this is uh, my first name VM1 and uh, what's happening here is that it's not actually showing me the connect button um, why I'll refresh that and uh, I did I select someone else oh that's fine I'm gonna unselect the other machine and yes by the way uh, Unselect VM2, yes. So unselect any of the machine, guys. And uh, I, I am select, I've selected mine, and now the connect button is there. So select your VM1 and click the connect button. You should be on this screen. I understand you might get an error here. Ignore that. If you see a big red screen here, it's okay. Ignore that. Anyone sees that big red screen here? Yes? No? Maybe? Oh yes, so yeah, we're going to ignore that. And uh, what we need to do is go to RDP client, Z's one. Let's click on this one, RDP client. Once we click the RDP client here, RDP client, right? All we need to do is get password with that private key that we downloaded, you know. so. Let's click that. So we already have a DNS name. We already have a username here. Let's click the get password. When you go to the get password, you're gonna be asked for where is this key. So you need to find this key. That's the only key that is required now. So I'm gonna click browse here, and I know that I downloaded that in my downloads folder. And, and downloads. And there's my key for today this is the same key that you're going to use for the second machine as well same key right so I'm going to double click that key here in my downloads folder it shows the private key and uh, that's it I will decrypt the password I will decrypt the password now, if you have decrypted the password, so this is your screenshot number four, five, ten, twenty. Oh man. Uh, screenshot number four. Okay, it's four. So let's go for screenshot number four, and that is. Um, the credentials of VM1. Screenshot number five will be credentials of VM2 as well. So credentials of VM1 uh, and your ID should be showing here. Uh, so screenshot 
number four credentials of your first name VM1 actually uh, or VM1 yeah so your ID must be showing and I'm gonna take a sample screenshot here credentials of VM1 screenshot for credentials of VM1 uh, actually your first name VM1 credentials of your first name VM1 and this is a screenshot copy this there future for credentials of your first name VM1 Alright, now let's connect to the your first name VM1. How we're just going to simply just like last class, we're just gonna download remote desktop file. We're gonna double click it. We're gonna put this, uh, you know, this uh, DNS and uh, address would be there already, uh, but the uh, password we need to put here. So I'm gonna click that download remote desktop file now. It's gonna be in the downloads folder. Save. Then I'm gonna just gonna click this now. I'll click this now. So it asks for this. The publisher of this remote site is Mac users could not do this. Oh. Oh, why Mac? Okay, so Mac users do not have RDP. Hey, in last class, how did you do that? I think there are three Mac users in this class, right? Guys, uh, those who have Mac, how did you connect to the machine? Ouch, really? Okay, so David says uh, you need putty. Actually, it's putty. P U T T Y. Uh, River says you told them not to. Oh, I did? Okay. Um, okay, so guys, uh, whatever error comes, just take a screenshot of that. I need that screenshot as a reason for your not able to put the rest of the screenshots, right? So I need an error screenshot. So you need to put that error screenshot in the document and uh, state that reason that uh, because I have Mac, I cannot do, go for RDP. So that's why the rest of the screenshots are not there, right? So uh, I need to give that reason if the management asks for me that why what happened? I need a reason, right? Uh, okay, then it says to them using Windows. Okay, that's good. All right, guys, so the rest of us will connect to this. I'm going to click the connect button here, and then I'm going to put the password, which is this. So I'm going to click on top of these boxes here, right? Copy, and then this is the main, this is RDP. So I'll click that and right click it paste and then I'm gonna go for press O and K so just paste the password and press OK and log in right oh well press yes here as well uh, again right How to copy paste the password um, well you can also do control V Tenzin if uh, right click does not work just uh, copy from there and uh, click on the window and control V on the keyboard should also paste it otherwise write the whole thing if the copy paste for some reason is not working So, so guys, uh, we're connected to the first machine. Um, I'm going to minimize this because I need to reach this stage for the second machine as well. I need to reach this stage for the second machine as well. So I'm going to minimize this now. And uh, so let's click cancel here. So this is the second machine at this page. Credentials for your first name VM2. We need a screenshot number five for that, right? So I'm going to click cancel here. 
Now I'm going to connect to the second machine the same way we connected to the first machine, right? I'll try to search my first machine and uh, you need to uncheck any other machine there to be able to connect to your machine. So I'm unchecking my VM1 and I'm going for my VM2. There's my VM2. If I click and if the connect sign is not disabled, it's clickable. This means that I have not checked any other machines checkbox, right? So your first name VM2 and there's a connect button here. So I'm going to click co and connect. And that, and then RDP client. So now you know the drill. I'm just going to go for, but we need a screenshot when the password is showing here. Uh, now we're going to go with the same thing. I'm going to click the get password here. You know the drill. And click the browse button here for exactly this name. The private file browse and to 17 February 2021 I'm gonna double click that and decrypt password right I'll click the decrypt password now we need a screenshot number five credentials of your first name VM2 credentials of your first name VM2. So I'll take a screen sample screenshot now for the credentials of the second VM. Your credentials of your first name VM2. So I'll go there. Screen shot five credentials of your first name VM2. Right? And the screenshot credentials of your first name VM2. Once this is done, let's go ahead and simply connect to it. I'm just going to download the remote desktop file. I'm going to click it, it's going to get opened, and then I'll put the password and next, 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 connect, right? So I'll download the remote desktop file in the downloads folder, save, now I'm going to click it. Then I'm going to go down to password. Then uh, you need to get back to that window. You need to go for this remote desktop monitor screen icon. Paste. Okay. And uh, oh, break time so soon. Nargis is break time. Well, okay, so we can have a break time till 8 and uh, then we can come back. So let's have a break time till 8. Okay, so the two machines are up and let's take a break. Eight. So break eight well, starts eight. Okay. So resuming. So we're all connected to the 
uh, two machines and uh, how do we do, know that uh, well you can go to this uh, you know RDP icon here this once you click that so you should see two machines here one two right so your first name VM1 and your first name VM2 here so I'm gonna click that uh, first VM and I'm going to um, run we're gonna go uh, and run the scripts there uh, so well I minimized it uh, why because I need to show you uh, this the PowerShell script that we need to run and uh, that uh, PowerShell script is Azure Lord Balancer Lab uh, because it's a Windows machine so uh, there is uh, Microsoft has created a lab that is uh, really good and uh, well that's on Azure we're doing it on AWS but the thing is in both uh, labs they install the in it, uh, IAS which is install IAS Internet Information Services right and uh, there are three scripts on this page that are the ones that we need so I'm gonna be uh, copying the three scripts in one note uh, let's uh, open PowerShell with admin privileges on uh, our two machines one by one and then run the following three scripts one by one right what three scripts so uh, I've uh, put those three lines there and uh, oops well just wanted to put them on this straight line wow okay what I just did I'll go down here and uh, go to this page. So uh, I'm just gonna try to separate the three scripts. So uh, the scripts start with a comment, right? And uh, so these are the three that uh, we need to run. So I'm just gonna copy them in WebEx chat as well. So they all start with so whatever is starting with the comment, uh, obviously that's uh, that cannot run. Uh, so whatever starts without comment, uh, comment is actually this pound sign, right? So uh, so this will not execute. This is just a comment, but uh, this will all execute, right? Uh, so. Uh, I'll just remove the, uh, the this code that is executable and from the comment right so now I'm gonna copy that in the WebEx chat so one by one we're gonna use that and you're going to first see that how I'm doing this so then you can follow me so I put it in the chat um, so first I'm copying so first of all I need to go to each machine and open PowerShell with admin privileges then I will start the copy pasting right so I'm gonna go to the first machine here this first machine right I'm gonna click that and in that first machine so I'll click here and click again so the actual DOS bar of the virtual machine comes now I need to open PowerShell right so uh, I, if I right click here on this right click on this then there's a Windows PowerShell admin right so in first machine you need to go to this Windows icon on the left bottom right click on this and you will see Windows PowerShell admin so let's click that and the Windows PowerShell admin opens right I'm gonna go to the other machine and do the same thing now. Mm -hmm. So 
so I'll go to the other machine so this is the other machine right and uh, if the blue bar comes yes or if you click no it doesn't matter it's okay then I'm gonna go to the left bottom the second machine as well right click here and Windows PowerShell admin I'm gonna click here as well now I have PowerShell open in both machines now there's another way that we can do is and that is uh, that we can see this restore down button for each machine I'm gonna click restore down button because I want to see them side by side so I'm going to click the restore down button for the VM2 this is my VM2 I'm gonna drag this VM2 here then I'm gonna go for again down here and this is the VM1 right so I'm gonna click that uh, first I'm gonna go inside it opens full screen then I'm gonna restore down this one as well right now they are side by side uh, you can also drag this to make it bigger right drag this make it bigger drag this here to make it bigger as well right and uh, then the PowerShell is open in the uh, inside it so you can just drag PowerShell wherever you want right so I'm dragging it just up here and this PowerShell here you can drag it wherever you want so it's here so in both I can now copy one by one the script so which one am I going to copy first obviously the first one from where to where so I'm gonna click in the background in one note and I can start from install up to the tools so this is also copied in your Webex chat and from install until tools I'm gonna right click I'm gonna select that I'm gonna copy this so this installs the whole web server and this takes a little time the rest of the scripts do not take that much time so I'm just gonna go to the first machine which I'm gonna click from here from the window I'm gonna if you're on the PowerShell you can simply right click on it and it will paste that command I'm gonna simply right click and there you go it does not paste okay seriously I'll just uh, go back here select it again maybe I took a little more time I'm gonna right click and copy and then I'm gonna go again and this time I'm gonna be quick and paste all right so uh, once you right click it just automatically pastes it so I'll press enter here which is so it starts installation of web server here so it's installing I'm gonna do the same thing on the other machine as well right I'm gonna click that and uh, I'm gonna go to the other machine and just gonna right click here it pastes here as well when we right click and enter so it starts in solution of the web server on the two machines Well, the first one may be finishing, uh, other one is still on its way.
88. Okay, first one is done. <coughs> Although we don't need to wait for the second one to be done, we can just paste the second script on the first one. Uh, but it's going to be really fast. The second and third script takes no time at all. Only the first script takes time. Okay, the second one is also done. Uh, although we don't need to wait for the second one to be done. So I'm just going to go in the back screen where the second line is. What is the second line? See this? Remove item from there. You can go for IAS start. Right, so remove item. Right click, copy. So from here, remove till HTM. And I'm going to go to the first machine and right click here and enter it's simply done and on the second machine right click here and press enter so what this uh, first one did would install the web server the second one actually removed the default first welcome page of this um, website now the third script will put its own welcome page uh, custom welcome page on the uh, on this uh, default website uh, so I'm gonna go for the third one and that is it starts with add content and it ends at this computer name so copy and I'm gonna paste in on uh, both machines right click here enter and I'm gonna go to the other machine And right click here, enter. So that's how uh, the three scripts are run successfully inside the two AC2 instances. So that three scripts are done on both. That would be our screenshot number. Uh, which one is that? Six. So that would be our screenshot number six. Uh, three scripts run ran on both instances so you have to have this kind of view and uh, your name is already showing okay uh, is there another way to copy in PowerShell well there's a control V once so you have to click inside and right click it pastes otherwise uh, click inside and control V try that Otherwise, the third one is the brutal one, and that is you need to write the whole thing. Uh, but normally, uh, I've never heard of it not being able to copy anything uh, before. So, select the whole thing, right click copy, and here just right click on top of the PowerShell it's supposed to. You wrote it. Is there another way? So, and it's frozen? Wow. Okay, that's weird. Uh, you can try again by closing the PowerShell and open it, and then try to copy first. If the error persists, then take that screenshot of the error. So screenshot number six here is this. So I'll just uh, take screenshot now. Oh man. Take a sample screenshot. So uh, three scripts ran on two EC2 instances. Your machine name should be showing there. So screenshot number six. Uh, three scripts ran on two on both EC2 instances or two EC2 instances up to you. Screenshot six. Uh, three scripts on ran on both EC2 instances. 
three scripts ran on both EC2 instances. That's the screenshot six. Okay. So that's the name. I'll just go for screenshot. Screenshot six. Three scripts ran on both EC2 instances. Alright, so now uh, how does it all work? Uh, what did we just do? So if I just go back to um, the diagram, so we created the two instances, we ran the scripts there as well. Uh, normally what happens is uh, the script uh, by default when you install a web server, there's a first page, welcome page that is always there. And that just simply has some generic message welcome so instead of that uh, the scripts that we changed the scripts that we ran actually changed the first page in fact it deleted the default first page and put the its own web page with a code there so it will just say welcome to and the computer name right it will just grab the computer name uh, and welcome to and the computer name and then it will do the same thing here welcome to computer name so I'm going to show you now that uh, the first page has been changed already and uh, why would we want to go for that? So suppose it says uh, welcome to computer name 1 and this is welcome to computer name 2. So what, I, what really happens is that uh, in a production environment these two machines are supposed to be exactly the same or the web page that opens for these two machines should be exactly the same. But here in test environment we want to test if the traffic, uh, if we initiate an internet traffic to reach uh, the first web page of this machine and if we reach the first web page of this machine so uh, does the load balancing uh, load balancer really take us to two pay machines or do, is it only taking us to the first machine so that's why we changed the first page of the web server here to show the computer name that should be different from the computer name here and uh, if we test the load balancer so uh, first the load balancer should take us here then if we uh, put the load balancer uh, IP on another browser it should take us as a second user and it should take us to the second machine there so that's the purpose of uh, creating a web page that has a different welcome page welcome to and then the computer names are supposed to be different I'm going to show you now where that is if I go to the first machine here now we can actually increase the size of this machine or maximize the window of the first machine uh, because I need to show you uh, how does the first page look like now. So I'm going to click here. Uh, I'm going to go to the yellow folder here of the first machine. Yellow folder or the file explorer of the first machine. And there I'm going to click this PC. Of the first machine right then I'm gonna go inside the C drive of the first machine and there is the inet pub folder when does that uh, get created when you install a web server and inet pub folder uh, gets created that is the web server default folder so I'm in the C drive then I'm going inside the inet pub folder and inside that inet pub folder the first page of the website is always inside the www root folder so C drive of the first machine inet pub folder after that C drive and then WW root so that has just that one file which is IA start right and it's an HTML document so I'm going to double click and start this to check what's inside we're just gonna pop up some messages just ignore those or okay I'll speak later and then it opens a new page here we need to go for the first page here this one so I'll close this and uh, I'm gonna go to the first page All right, it says welcome to whatever is the computer name here right and the computer name here is because we did not change the operating system name so it's just showing this name here not the outside label of the machine so inside the operating system name is this we can change and restart uh, this machine as well but that's gonna take time so we can keep it to this name because obviously the this same uh, the name computer name of the other machine is different than this 
well that's what we want that the name should be different so I have opened this page here I'm gonna to go to the second computer or the other computer I'm gonna change the page uh, open that same page in the same path there as well so I'm gonna uh, restore down again this guy because I need to go to the second computer and go to the same place to check what does it show there so it's here now and uh, I'm gonna make it maximum for now so I could go inside the folder structure and open the first page of the site and click here click anywhere else okay then yellow folder or the file explorer of the second machine then this PC of the second machine C drive of the second machine inert pub folder of the second machine inside the C drive then www root folder inside the inert pub folder inside the C drive in the second machine and that's the file IAS start I'm gonna double click that and then ignore all the messages like click ask me later or cancel and then click close then go to the first page right so it shows this name this name is different from the other machine name right so if I click restore down here as well so now you see that uh, your first name VM1 has some random name here which is uh, different from your first name VM2's uh, OS random name so it ends in my case with V78 and it ends here EK so uh, we can have uh, the seventh screenshot here uh, the two machine uh, first web page two machines two instances first web page two instances first web page screenshot number seven Two instances what first web page I'll just take the screenshot sample one screenshot seven two instances first web page screenshot 7 3 remaining and I'll put the screenshot 7 there two instances first web page okay so we go ahead now we can go for the elastic load balancer and hopefully we're able to open it so if we go to the diagram uh, so the two instances part is done that we wanted to configure two instances with a web server with the first page that is showing their local computer names second thing is that load balancer we need to configure that now right so where is this load balancer it's in the EC2 dashboard so let's go inside the AWS it still shows this area right I'm gonna click cancel here all the machines are there and uh, we're in the EC2 dashboard right so if you go further down 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 okay there you go load, load balancer load balancing and there's a load balancer right so we're going to click that load balancer which is just on the same ec2 dashboard at the bottom load balancer let's click that and uh, you do not have any load balancers in the region obviously so we're going to create load balancer okay let's click the blue button create load balancer and let's see if you are able to do that once you click that do you see this screen oh 
there's a yes. All right, thank you. So, um, there is uh, there are three types of uh, application load balancers. Uh, well, three types of four types of load balancers. There, application load balancer, network load balancer, gateway load balancer. Application load balancer when you need uh, you choose an application load balancer when you need a flexible feature set for your web applications with HTTP and HTTPS traffic operating at the request level. Application load balancers provide advanced routing and visibility features targeted at application architectures, including microservices and containers. So, uh, well, it's today's uh, complicated uh, enterprise-grade application-related uh, load balancer and uh, the way that your application works, the inner internal architecture of the application, uh, it, this load balancer is really equipped with all the features that a typical enterprise grade application might need. Then there is a TCP, TLS, UDP, uh, network load balancer. Choose a network load balancer when you need ultra high performance. TLS, transport layer security offloading at scale. Uh, for security reasons, centralized certificate deployment. Again, for security reason and encryption. Support for UDP and static IP addresses for your application. So these are typical network services that you would need for from a network load balancer um, operating the connection level network load balancers are capable of handling billions of requests per second securely while maintaining ultra low latencies so typical for a uh, fast and secure performance over the network uh, then gateway load balancer uh, when you need to deploy and manage a fleet of third-party virtual appliances that support uh, Geneva uh, these appliances enable you to improve security, appliance, and policy controls. I'm going to click learn more here. Uh, just like we heard a word uh, from some guy, Kofeve. Kofe, Kofe, anyway, so this is Geneva. Anyway, uh, so um, gateway load balancers use gateway. Okay. Uh, what is uh, this, right? So the uh, gateway load balancer operates at third layer of the o OSI model, the network layer. It listens for all IP packets across all ports and forwards traffic to the target group that's specified in the listener rule. It maintains stickiness of flows to a specific target appliance using five tuple for uh, TCP UDP flows, uh, three tuple for non-TCP UDP flows. The gateway load balancer and its registered virtual appliance and senses exchange application traffic using the Geneva protocol on port 6081. It supports a maximum transmission unit of 8500. So, um, Geneva. Seriously? Yeah, they did not bother to actually uh, put that Geneva protocol. So, I'm just gonna go ahead and bother myself uh, this. So, Uh, protocols like BGP, Border Gateway Protocol, LLDP, Link Layer Discovery Protocol, and ISIS Intermediate System and Intermediate System Protocols. Um, protocols. Generic Network Virtualization and Encapsulation. Seriously, that was it. So, Generic Network Virtualization and Encapsulation. So, Network Virtualization and Encapsulation. Wow. Amazing. So, network guys, uh, you would uh, want to learn that in CCNP, I guess, uh, the Geneva, uh, but it's uh, pretty much related to the uh, virtualization, uh, virtualized networks. That's where it is used. Now, we go down to our uh, classic load balancer that gives us a good idea about how basically load balancers really work. So I'm going to click, uh, click here, create. So let's click the create button, right? Let's click the create and eight button for the classic row button. So once you click the create button, you should see this page. Are you all able to see this page? Okay, so it's still a yes. All right, thank you. Um, <clears throat> so here, we need to give the load balancer name 
and uh, obviously it's going to be your first name dash lord balancer right your first name dash lord balancer that's the first thing and uh, it's in the default vpc which is okay uh, create an internal load balancer and enable advanced vpc configuration so that's if you have created uh, multiple vpcs which is virtual private cloud which is your local private lan on a public cloud with private ip addresses right so if you have any of those then you can click that otherwise we don't have to we don't have those so your first name load balancer uh, once you put that now what kind of protocol are you supporting obviously it's http port 80 that we are uh, supporting that's the traffic so uh, we don't need to add anything else we are not uh, actually load balancing rdp traffic because rdp has to connect to a specific machine but http can be opened on any one of the machines right so we're going to keep it exactly like this page and click assign security groups once we click assign security groups now we have a uh, th few thousand security groups here thousand. so first of all uncheck whatever is selected right and then check your first name and today's date so this is 10 I'll have to go further down down 16 okay and 17 this one right 17 and uh, then your name in 17 oh there's my name okay i'll just select that so make sure nothing else is selected and uh, so that is 17 and the load balancer so at the before we click the finish button on this uh, wizard we need a screenshot so let me last step first one the one that says uh is no no default uncheck the default and go for yours okay i'll click previous and uh, yeah that's the first screen uh, damandeep so you just need to put your first name dash load balancer that's all on the screen and click security groups before that oh wow so you missed uh, creating it Cancel. So you're supposed to if I okay. We are in EC2 dashboard. We go down here at the bottom. We click the load balancers, and then we click create load balancer. The one with the classic option. Yep. The one with the gray classic option. Okay. So you were somewhere else. <laughs> uh, so when we were doing when we started the lab okay i'll click the create below and put balancer then we click the classic load balancer the gray one then we put here your first name dash load balancer and http port 80 and then so we just put the name here and click assign security groups and in the assigned security group, it's already on select an existing one. So I'm just going to uncheck the default one, uncheck, and then go down to today's date. It's not 16, it's 17. And then your first name. So your first name and 17. Just check that. Uh, once you've checked that, so there's a screenshot coming at the end of it. So do not click, do not go out of me uh, this time. Uh, I'm warning before that there will be screenshot coming so do not click ahead of me okay so once you selected that click configure security settings configure security settings now there is a security settings here improve your load balancer security uh, it uh, should not be HTTP it should be HTTPS that's what it's saying so we can ignore that uh, and uh, configure health check we're gonna click configure health check here what we need to do is that uh, we need to so our first file name is IIS start remember right so if I go back here and uh, just to show you you don't have to come here 
uh, and uh, this is I IIS start it's not index.html right and the backslash is actually representing the whole path of the C drive inert pop ww root so what am I talking about so it's uh, this if uh, what you need to do is first of all HTTP should be selected second thing AT is there so you don't need to do any changes but here make sure that you remove index.html but you keep that forward slash remove the index.html but keep the forward slash so backspace backspace back 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 space back back and back and stop so you need this forward slash you need this forward slash right so what is that as I was saying before as well that uh, in this uh, forward slash represents the whole path here C and it have www root then whatever the file name we don't care about that right so uh, it's just saying that it's going to use the ping protocol to check on that path uh, if uh, that path exists which path which I just mentioned here uh, this path if this path exists then uh, this means that uh, this health check is able to uh, you know get successful report from the virtual machine just means the virtual machine is up if it cannot get ping from this path this means the virtual machine is actually down that's why it cannot right so that's why you have to be careful and keep that forward slash there while removing everything else but yes we could have given the is uh, the actual name of the file that is actually there ias start.html but it's better to just keep it that way uh, second thing is response timeout is five seconds and uh, time to wait when receiving a response from the health check so uh, it's five seconds we can change that to two seconds because we need to see the results faster can we uh, put two here yes second thing is interval amount of time between health checks so how long should it wait uh, before it should go for uh, second another health check so every 30 seconds it's gonna send a packet and check if the machine is up and running so we can change it to five every five seconds we need result faster right so then it says unhealthy threshold if number of consecutive health check failures before declaring an EC2 instance unhealthy so it will check two times if two times the ping does not come back it announces that that machine is down hey load balancer don't send traffic to that machine right so it's going to consider two failures of the ping uh, as the unavailability of the virtual machine so healthy threshold so number of consecutive health check successes before declaring an AC2 instance healthy so it's gonna check 10 times by default so it's gonna check 10 times 10 pings uh, and uh, there will be an interval of 5 seconds between each ping uh, and when the 10 all 10 pings come back this means the machine is up and uh, it will consider it up so we can just change that down to 2 as well so 2522 two, two. make sure your setting shows now this is really aggressive this is like increasing traffic over the network uh, but uh, this is our test environment so that's why we're doing that otherwise the default setting is good enough for your production environments right so this is screenshot number eight um, health LB health check settings screenshot number eight LB which is load balancer LB health check settings screenshot eight LB health check settings so I'm gonna take a sample screenshot of this and your ID should be showing on the top right LB health check settings screenshot 8 LB uh, load balancer health check settings
Okay. I'll be held to check settings. So go back. Okay. So once that is done, let's click add EC2 instances. Let's click the add EC2 instances. And whoa, okay, we got everyone's instances. So everyone just select your two instances. Everyone just select your two instances. So I'm just going to go for my first one, which is your first name, VM1. Okay, there's my first one. And then my second one, your first name. VM2, got it, right? So now it shows like this, right? Availability zone uh, distribution. And you can see that already that option of enable cross zone load balancing because our machines are actually on different zones. You can see here, this is 1B, 1B, 1B showing, 1B here, 1B, while on, above is 1A1. So these are only on two different availability zones. So cross zone uh, load balancing is already selected, which is good. And enable connection draining just means that uh, uh, it's going to <coughs> draining just means that removal or slow removal. So uh, connection removal if the machine is going down, it's going to really slowly, uh, you know, let the connection be gone, and uh, it's not going to abruptly remove any connections. So uh, the two options are there, and the two machines that uh, we have selected. Uh, you know, I'm so. Um, hmm. Actually, I'm just saving the last two uh, screenshots for if uh, you know it works for everyone. So let's click that add tags. Let's click the add tags, and uh, in the tag, go for comp three one zero eight winter twenty twenty one and value your first your id dash your name right or id dash your name your id dash your name so once you have uh, uh, done uh, done that uh, then um, and uh, then we will go ahead right so let's click review and create oh three one zero eight thank you three one zero eight and uh, review and create, right? So I'm going to click review and create. So this is the whole review of all the configurations. Review of all the configurations. Ready? Okay. So let's click Create, create, create. Right? Right, right? Okay, I'm gonna click create now. And it's created, created. created. Is it created for everyone? Yes. Oh, okay, thank you. No. Measure it. Well, your rate exceeded. Great exceeded. Okay, what's that? Um, anyone can share and let me know. Uh, either you can put a screenshot on. Oh man, we never created a WhatsApp. Actually, we did create. Failed to create load balancer. Rate exceeded. Oh yeah. Okay, guys, uh, try. You know, we all tried at the same time, so AWS could not take that much pressure. Uh, yeah. So 
Well, some of you can try now and some of you can try after five minutes and some of you can try after ten minutes. Okay, for Zamandeep it worked now, Cherries it worked now. Like try a little later, right? Um, it's working now, okay. How it says, Wells. Those who got the error, did you, were you able to, is it working for you now? For those who got the errors. Anyone else who got the errors and it's still not working? Okay, so it's a yep, and so hopefully it's working for everyone. Yay! Right? So if it is working for everyone, then click the then uh, click the close button. Uh, hopefully, if it's working for uh, for you, if it's working for you, let's click the close button. So I'm gonna click the close button. And uh, now the, <laughs> there are you know 16 load balancers here, so that's pretty cool. Uh, so guys, uh, the ultimate test is the final two screenshots. Uh, is yeah. So first you need to click your load balancer. So search for your name and click that load balancer. Now the most important thing here is when you click your load balancer then there is a instances and there's a health check. So if I go to instances so those instances need to show in service. Is everyone's instances showing in service or out of service? So you select your load balancer, you click instances, you select in service. Uh, yeah, one of each and it's uh, in service. Out of service, okay. Majority say in service. And uh, VM1 out, VM2 in. Uh, okay, so both should be should be in service and it, it's a matter of time guys. So uh, refresh. It's a matter of time and re and fresh. So uh, it's uh, in service. Okay, so it's still no message. Uh, David still VM1 still out of service hmm so the first one is in service but uh, the other one is out of service that's also you know it could be uh, hopefully your settings are okay your steps are okay because uh, if those steps were exactly not configured that way then if there's a slight difference if the load balancer is different any of those things can cause the machine to not respond and uh, yeah then if refresh does not take it and you can still wait for a little longer but if everyone else is getting in service and you're not so it could be configurational difference as well um, but they must sometimes you know uh, it just happens after a bit longer time and sometimes it just doesn't then uh, you have to trace back all the steps uh, what happened really and uh, what steps were uh, if there's a very 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 slight step missed uh, that could definitely cause it to not be able to be in service not be able to be well okay so well Now VM1 does not show anymore. 
VM1 does not show anymore. Yikes. Uh, try to take the screenshots of the errors and I will understand if uh, you're not able to see that or it, it's, it could be slow internet at that particular moment. It could be any of those things. Uh, so uh, just uh, try to take a picture of the in-service status for those uh, whose uh, machines are not showing in service. Okay guys, uh, well uh, we need to check as well. Uh, the thing is that uh, if your both machines are in service, then click description. So just take a screenshot of your errors and then upload that in the document. And then uh, you want to practice your own, then uh, you know you can do it uh, later as well. Uh, what happened? Okay, guys. If you select your load balancer and you go to description, you see this. Right. So this is the uh, load balancer DNS name. This is the that uh, DNS name with which we can reach the load balancer, and the load balancer can actually take us to the virtual machine. So uh, this is the name that we need to right click and copy. Right click and copy. Right, this is the name that we need to, not the A record, just without the A record. You need to right click and copy that. So now what really happens here is, uh, if I click the new tab here, right? New tab, totally new tab in the Chrome and just paste that. So it takes me to one of the machines whose first page has this written, right? But if I click refresh on the top, does this name changes? Because if you refresh, the, you're loading the page again, which means it can take you as a second user and it could take you to the other machine as well. So I'm gonna refresh again. Oh yes, now it changes. And refresh again. Oh, it changes. And refresh again, it changes again. So it's sending the traffic to uh, both like uh, one user to one machine uh, other user to so the final two screenshots screenshot 9 is one of the names and then screenshot 10 is the other name right so you can just say that uh, uh, load balancer works uh, for screenshot 9 and the same name load balancer works screenshot 10 but screenshot 10 should be the other machine name right mac users cannot get this okay oh mess with you have a mac user you're a mac you have a mac ouch so um oh that's why you were having so much issues well um in the how were you able to in a mac how were you able to remotely connect phone i mean like the remote desktop were you able to use that or did you use buddy master um, so guys uh, screenshot number nine would be oh did not use patty uh, so you use something else but you were able to connect okay that's good so guys here uh, i'm going to take a sample screenshot and uh, I'm gonna name it uh, load balancer works so you need to copy this whole link here for the screenshot you need to copy the whole lead ba load balancer DNS name and this machine name and uh, this would be screenshot 9 screenshot 9 load balancer works but the screenshot would show one machine then screenshot 10 I will refresh it again and I need to have the other machine name and the number should be different so I'm gonna refresh once more and uh, now it changes so again I'm gonna take a sample screenshot and uh, I need to have that load balancer uh, DNS and the other machine name 
I'm going to still uh, go for load balancer works screenshot 10 load balancer works and this time the other machine name should appear so uh, that's our screenshots line and uh, screenshot 10 right so um, now these uh, screenshots uh, are here uh, so uh, what we need to so uh, as far as the load balancer is concerned it's okay it, it works fine and uh, uh, we need to uh, we needed to just check this out uh, that uh, how it is working and uh, the main thing is instances are supposed to be in service if everything was good I am showing the health check here as well so it's 2522 two, two health check you can compare that health check with your if it is a little bit different then you go for edit health check and put it 2522 uh, the numbers there and we talked about the reasons for that those numbers as well so now what we can do is we can delete uh, the load balancer first and then delete uh, our virtual machines right so uh, the first step would be to delete the load balancer the second would be to delete uh, each of our machines so what we can do is how to delete the load balancer first we are actually on that page and I am I have already clicked my load balancer it is already clicked here right it's already clicked here so I'm going to just click the actions so just select your load balancer and click the actions and then click the delete button actions and click the delete button for your load balancer and uh, once you click that so it shows uh, are you sure you want to delete the following load balancer it's your first name load balancer right so there's a yes delete here and uh, I'm going to click uh, the yes delete oh wait 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 okay just kidding I'm, I'm just carrying you that's it so yeah let's go ahead and uh, uh, I'm sure some some of you few of you might have you know gotten scared I'm sure so I'm just kidding come on so <laughs> Uh, so here and uh, <laughs> so here uh, once it is gone so I'm just going to refresh that and I should there should be very less <laughs> okay so you got scared still some waiting what no 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 don't wait just click it I just said killing right away after that oh see it's gone all are gone no no when I clicked I'm sure you must have clicked at that time so then I at once screamed oh wait wait uh, just to you know have some fun so um, yeah so those uh, are the load balancers then what we can do is we can go up a little right so just go up 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 because it's the same dashboard where the two machines are also there so there is instances written here right so I'm gonna click the instances now these instances now you need to select your instance one and your instance two so I'm gonna go down here to my instance one your first name VM one I selected that and then I'm gonna down uh, go down oh, my uh, second instance is already selected let me check anything else is selected anything else should not be just my instances should be selected okay and I'll just go for action 
and uh, there is oh sorry either and I'm not gonna go for action I'm gonna go for instant instant state right so instant state and there's a terminate instance so you select your instance and click terminate instance right so once you click terminate instance so it should look like this now right it should look like this one so you know since I did that already with you guys that oh wait 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 so um, I, I, I'm not going to do that again now so let's click terminate now and uh, well you need to make sure that your instance has turned to shutting down and then it is it has turned to gray terminated make sure your instance shows terminated make sure your instance shows terminated both instances show I'm gonna refresh that and let's see how many are shutting down now oh wow well, every one is shutting down and yeah David is David S is uh, his machine is terminated it has already terminated okay mine first one is terminated second one is terminated okay we're good we're good okay so re and fresh and uh, seems like all the machines have terminated here all right uh, so if the machines are terminated now so uh, this is it guys go ahead and upload your screenshots to the blackboard right uh, we got the 10 screenshots for today and uh, well good thing is uh, uh, there was no you know permission or privileges errors so I'm just gonna go ahead and go to my I'll just uh, create that wait for me I'll just uh, it's, it's upload no oops Oops, courses. You guys are four nine four ten. Uh, before the load balancer was checked, uh, my VM was already terminated. What? I didn't take the screenshot of that as well. Okay, okay, David. Uh. Uh, it's not week five, guys. It's uh, week six. Seventeen. So put in your Word document and week six. Upload Okay, so go to week six refresh and upload the document there and see you next week so student full name yeah student dash full name is the word document name student dash full name the word document name 